This is new territory for me. There are more top 10 lists than cat videos on YouTube. And now I've cracked, I mean, now I've decided to bite the bullet and make a list myself. And how better to begin than with a show that reminds us all that we're heading for disaster with no way of stopping it. You've seen the title, you've peeked at the thumbnail, that show is Black Mirror. Beginning in 2011 on Channel 4, before being picked up by internet titan Netflix, this 21st century amalgamation of Rod Serling's The Twilight Zone and Roald Dahl's Tales of the Unexpected has been nominated for and won many awards in addition to having been embraced by fans of depressing media including sci-fi, myself included. With 19 episodes, 7 from its TV days and 12 on Netflix and a 5th series on the way, here are my personal favourite top 13 Black Mirror installments. And before you go typing a strongly worded comment below, yes this video does contain spoilers. If you haven't seen it yet, you should remedy it right away. A downbeat show deserving of an unlucky number, let's not mess about. Here are my top 13 favourite Black Mirror episodes. Number 13. Black Museum. The final episode of Series 4. This one has had a very mixed reaction. Some enjoyed it, but others wish it were never made. I really liked it, but I put this one quite low on the list because it's not as refined as you'd expect from the show. The book ends in inserts with Rollo Haynes, played with eager sensationalism by Douglas Hodge, and Ish played by Letitia Wright, who won't be forgotten thanks to the success of Black Panther. Start well, but the twist that she's wrongly convicted murderer Clayton Lee's door, and she was sabotaging the museum, <sighs> feels very 11th hour to me. Also, as a fan of Carl Pilkington, it would be incredibly stupid of me not to have seen the similarities between his film idea and the Mills story. I was hoping Clive Warren would show, but alas, it was not to be. In among a series of Easter eggs, the best parts of the story are definitely in the Dawson tale. The idea of a doctor being able to sense patients' pain, but ultimately becoming addicted to it, to the point of committing murder, it's so macabre, you definitely believe it came from the pen of... Pen. Black Museum isn't one of Black Mirror's finest, but it gets under my skin as a good throwback to shock horror, so it would be foolish of me not to include it. Number 12. Playtest. Kurt Russell's son Wyatt stars in this as a kind of hipster, kind of bohemian character, a backpacker, that's the word, named Cooper. He ends up in London and signs up to be a guinea pig to test out an experimental VR game. It starts off cute with retro graphics and then more realistic ones, then into horror video game cliches before finally playing with Cooper's sanity. Disturbing examples include turning his new friend and lover against him, leading into a really effective use of horror makeup, the voice of the woman starting to taunt him and misdirect him, and then the ultimate fear, making him lose his mind like his father, who died as a result of Alzheimer's. As well as being a cautionary tale of how not to use VR, it's also a really sad episode about dealing with death and estrangement. Playtest lacks a lot of layers you expect Black Mirror to have, but nevertheless, the irony of a man who had every opportunity to talk to his man wouldn't, until he screams her name as his brain dies at the very end, stays with you long after those credits roll, and the countdown to another tale begins. Number 11. The National Anthem. It's pretty much a meme at this point to tell newcomers to Black Mirror not to begin their journey with the show with the first episode because it's too much to handle. They're right, but not solely for the reason you're thinking of. The National Anthem was originally shown on Channel 4 and it proved to the general public that this television programme was going to show them things they didn't want to see. It's also the first episode I've included on this list that predicted the future. Brooker plays the whole story straight in spite of such a random yet disturbing premise. It gives us a good talking to about our culture's strange and damaging obsession with scandals and the perverse. The British public hype up the disgusting act of their own Prime Minister, played by Rory Kinnear, committing bestiality, and when it comes around, they look away in shame. First episodes of shows are important, but you expect them not to be the best in the world. However, the National Anthem lives up to the title of reflecting the world, reflecting the people who love a bit of gossip or a scandal in a black mirror. Number 10. USS Callister. Also known as the Star Trek Piss Take episode, the premiere episode of the fourth series is one of the program's most interesting tales. You're not sure where it's going at the beginning when Meth Damon, sorry, 
Jesse Plemons' character, Robert Daly, shows up. I think he's going to be the focus. You don't assume much, but gradually we find out he's a despicable human being going to very unsettling lengths to get his own back on his colleagues, including the new girl, Nanette, who's got no romantic interest in him whatsoever. It's a very relevant acknowledgement of the dark side of fandom, the people who never grow out of their moody preteen or early teen selves, the ones who don't realise that words can hurt as well as sticks and stones, the kind of fans I hope I never meet and the type I would hope to never become an adulthood. Daly's childish profanity as his universe is deleted definitely exemplifies the damaging gamer culture we encounter on the internet. I don't know about you, but I think it's top 10 material. Number 9. Archangel. Parenthood isn't easy, and it's got to be more difficult if you're a single parent. Archangel, directed by Jodie Foster, makes that clear from the start. You know, I don't really have much to say about it, but I think it's arrived at the right time, and while it's not necessarily criticising the idea of helicopter parenting, Charlie Brooker confessed he is one, it is an important cautionary tale. There's that definition again. It's an important cautionary tale about trying to protect your kids can sometimes be more damaging. Number eight, White Christmas. When you hear the sentence, Black Mirror does a Christmas special, you know straight away there's not gonna be any saccharine sugar coating here. White Christmas was the last episode broadcast on Channel 4. After this, all the Black Mirrors would be handled by Netflix. Ray Spall and John Hamm stars Joe and Matthew. Matthew tells two stories that end badly, and Joe is tricked into revealing how he ended up in the rather unusual base they're staying at. The idea of three tales meeting at the end is a really strong one. I think this warrant would make a great Black Mirror film, although maybe wait a while after these before going that far, okay, Netflix? This one's bound to stay with you as well. The morality behind Breaking the Spirit of the Cookie, played by Una Chaplin, makes for a really unsettling middle tale. Next to that, you've also got Matthew's fate, being blocked from everyone in the whole wide world, which is haunting and... Well, let's just say you won't hear that cheery Christmas song again. Really, I think this one's as high as it is, because unlike Black Museum, which didn't quite work, White Christmas brings everything together an awful lot better. If you ever get sick of sappy Christmas schlock, then you can always turn to Black Mirror for a whole other dream of a White Christmas. Number 7, Nosedive. It's a bit strange putting the first Netflix episode above the last Channel 4 one, but Nosedive is a bit more important. Don't get me wrong, I love their one and only Christmas special, but Nosedive had a lot more responsibility, more weight on its shoulders. They had to placate fans who were worried the Black Mirror wouldn't be as good, and they had to draw in a new crowd. And what better topic to discuss in the 2010s than what would happen if the world was ruled by likes and retweets. Of course, that world might become a reality in China. The world of characters of Noah's Dive and Habit has a 1950s aesthetic, but in spite of the colour, Lacey Pound, played phenomenally by Bryce Dallas Howard, has a story that's very unpleasant. She tries to raise her social status by going to her shallow, completely false, completely plastic friend Nene's wedding. Ironically, in trying to get there, her stars go down and down and down and down. Max Richter actually works into the soundtrack, which is brilliant. Nothing is genuine in the world, and anything that is, it's not seen in a favourable light. It's unbecoming. And in an ending so incredible, so striking, Lacey discovers that behind the glass wall, without the stars or likes or whatever the fuck, there's much more freedom than she got on the outside. The sheer joy she experiences, the happiness in being able to say whatever she wants without worrying about how it's going to affect her. I know I keep saying this, but that, that's like phenomenal. That's incredible. Nosedive is on the list because of an incredible score by Max Richter, a very relevant story and a great lead performance too. Number 6. White Bear. The second episode of series 2 of Black Mirror, I have a strong feeling Charlie and his team must have gone out of their way to confuse the viewer up to the point of everything making sense. White Bear even does the unthinkable, the downright shocking, in that you're made to sympathise, empathise, whatever the correct definition with the Lenore Kreiklau character, or is it Lenore Krylau? If someone knows how to pronounce it correctly, please comment, but the Victoria Skelane character. But then you find out what Victoria and her boyfriend did, suddenly gain a new context, leading to a more perverse Groundhog Day-esque ending. One of the most valued players in this has to be Michael Smiley, who some of you might remember 
played tires in space. You don't really know what you're going to expect from him. He could be very calm one minute and then crazy the next. It's a really dark episode that evolves as you watch it and takes on a completely new meaning on repeat viewings. Number 5, Shut Up and Dance. Despite the title, they never play that song by Walk the Moon, but the sentence is given an appropriately new and darker context. I know some people watching this might be surprised and they might disagree with me putting this one as high as the top 5 because Shut Up and Dance is incredibly heavy and also because it takes on a similar swerve type twist as the one I put below the swipe bear. Again you're made to sympathise with someone through the events of this story whom at the end you find out is a nasty piece of work and then your whole sense of right and wrong and expectations are put through the blender. It also asks the question the film Prisoners asked, remember that film? How far would you go for something when Shut Up and Dance? It's a different idea. How far would Kenny, Alex Lawher, go to stop a video of him looking at some pictures, in his own words, being leaked to his friends and family? How far would Hector, played by Jerome Flynn, go to stop his wife and kids finding out he was cheating with a prostitute? Would you rob a bank? Would you kill another man? Kenny does, and in the end it means fuck off, with a great use of the Radiohead song Exit Music for a film, driving home the weary nihilistic tone of those scenes, and a perfect ironic use of the troll face. Shut Up and Dance could have easily been made a couple of years ago on Channel 4, so it's a bit of an outlier in the new series, but don't let that put you off it. Shut Up and Dance brings together the bleakest elements of Black Mirror into one, and as Radiohead finishes their song, you're left to think about what you've just watched. Number 4. 15 Million Merits. I think Black Mirror properly arrived in the second story of its first series. It even aired after the X Factor final, which was a genius idea. Of course, 15 million Maris doesn't feel very real. In fact, it's quite disconnected from reality, but in doing so, it helps to emphasize the theme of the story. Brooker wrote this with his wife, the former Blue Peter presenter Connie Hook, whom he worked with on Screen Wipe on BBC4 and a brilliantly dumb skit about documentaries. And it deserves to be held in a high regard, and not solely because it introduced a new generation to Irma Thomas. Daniel Kaluuya stars as Bing, whose journey is honestly incredible writing. He loses and loses in a society all about fitness and fame and euphoria and advertisements, including the woman he loves, Abby Khan. The defining moment of the episode has to be when he unleashes his truthful vitriol on the judges of the reality show Hot Shot with a shard of glass against his neck threatening to kill himself unless they let him speak. It's raw and it curses the ground the judges walk on with fuck you being used a total of 10 times. And when he's finished and sees that all his heartache and pain means jack shit, he conforms because it's better than being on a bike bombarded with ads. People have made comparisons between a classic episode of The Twilight Zone and, more intriguingly, Charlie Brooker's career, in that we have someone who speaks the truth about how shit everything can be, but is nevertheless a part of that system. Who knows? Maybe there's some truth in that, or maybe it's reading too deeply. This is the internet after all. Whatever influenced it, there's no denying that 15 Million Merits is one of the best ever episodes. And anyone who knows what love is, will understand. Number 3. Be Right Back. There are two songs from the Bee Gees that play in Be Right Back. How Deep Is Your Love, and If I Can't Have You which have a more deeper meaning in this episode, which has some very heavy themes about moving on, grief and death. I think the definition of an emotional roller coaster applies best to Be Right Back. It seems unthinkable to have a deceased loved one's social media profile texts and phone calls get combined into a version of them you can talk to and lay a proper physical avatar, and Martha, Hayley Atwell, sticks by that for some time, but of course the temptation is too much and the redhead Irish voice and appearance of Donald Gleeson returns as a replica. But it's too good to be true, still. It might look and sound like her husband, but I can't replace him because it's not the original. It's not human. I definitely recommend giving Be Right Back another watch because there's a lot of interesting foreshadowing and reoccurrences. It's an incredibly emotional piece. Number 2. San Junipero. When I first watched San Junipero, I had no clue where it was going. And on paper it sounds like a great risk. Black Mirror is about the present or the not too distant future. And here it is going back to the past. What's that about? But like Be Right Back, it tells a very heavy story about love and death and the concept of an afterlife and moving on. It touches upon life experiences and choices. And with the progression of the episode, you see it reach a conclusion that seemed impossible. This is the first Black Mirror episode to properly end happily. Although you could argue that Nosedive was the first to do it, that's more of a bittersweet ending. 
Lacey might be free in one sense, but she's still behind bars or a glass wall in her case. San Junipero does treat death seriously, though. Never crosses the line and acknowledges that a virtual afterlife could be seen as bad taste because of how many people never crossed over because it wasn't available. So from one perspective, you could look at this from the same bleak spyglass as other episodes, but I don't feel that's what they were going for. After all, they play an upbeat song by Belinda Carlisle, Heaven is a Place on Earth, an incredibly faint choice and one you won't be able to separate from the episode after watching over the credits. I also have to compliment Clint Mansell's score, which is very futuristic. Well done. San Junipero is a beautiful to look at episode and has a story with real emotion and weight to it. It is memorable and it more than deserves the accolades and praise it gets. It challenges what you expect from a Black Mirror episode and it did it incredibly well. But what grabs first place I hear you ask? Okay, here goes. My number one favourite Black Mirror episode is... The Entire History of You. I don't know if this one tops that many lists. I've chosen it because its concept and execution really appeals to me. It would be an interesting idea to be able to play back your own memories, but in true Black Mirror fashion, the over-analysis or reading too deeply into them could ruin your life, could drive you to desperate means could result in you hitting your spouse or threatening her ex, finding out your child might not even be yours. They never say, but it's very clear. It's a frightening disintegration. I wonder what the world would be like if Black Mirror didn't get renewed and there was only one series because this would be such a dark note to end on. The entire history of you is a deeply disturbing episode, and it just plummets into more and more depths of despair until our protagonist Liam Toby Kevill is left alone in the hollow house once inhabited by him and his wife, the new Doctor Who, Jodie Whittaker. As the minimalist sort of grieving music by Stuart Earle plays, and with nothing around him but the memories of better times playing in front of him over and over again, he decides to cut the grain, the main technology of the episode, out of his head. His final fate unknown, left for us to decide. Holy shit, that is bleak. You feel like absolute crap, like you've been shown something you truly didn't want to see, but needed to, and that's exactly what I think of when I think of Black Mirror. The entire history of you is such a powerful story that Robert Downey Jr.'s company, Team Downey, has even optioned it to be possibly made into a film, and honestly, I'd love to see that. It's easy to wrap your head around, and unless Series 5 is something truly, deeply amazing in store for us, it stands as my favourite Black Mirror episode ever. And that's my list. Feel free to agree or disagree. Let me know what your favourite episodes are in the comments. I'd recommend checking out Harry's Moving Castle's analysis videos because they're really in-depth and they're really well made. Um, yeah, if this video works out, I might do more. If not, I'll uh, keep going. Like, subscribe, comment. Do whatever you want, just, just try to be civil, okay? See yous.